Do you want to talk about it? Oh god, oh no, like... Hey internet, it's Jessica, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon, Fritz's route. So, in the last episode, we did run into Fritz, now we're at his house, but he doesn't know that he's cursed, or he doesn't know what's really going on with him, and Lucette is trying to leave to get back to the Martian, but Fritz won't let her leave because he's scared like something will happen to her. But luckily, Dolora found us, and now she suspects something is really wrong with Alcaster and the other mystery person who's in the house. So let's continue. I watched as Dolora paced on the floor alongside the bed. You're a witch. Can't you just teleport us out of here? Teleportation and portals are high-level magic that only the bearers are, and select few can cast. I look closely at her. So you cannot cast that spell. I would have cast it already if I could, princess. I had a thought. With all the bu bluffing you do, that you would be more capable. Wow. <laughs> Any more sass and I'll turn you into a toad. You wouldn't dare. Or would I? I glare at her, but she does but she does not look away. Argue will not get us out of here. We need to get back to the Martian. Why can't we just ask Fritz to help us? It would be easier that way. I do not understand why he can't come with us. I don't trust him. That means nothing coming from someone who's un untrustworthy as you. Well, I can say with certainty that I'm the most trustworthy person you have right now, dear princess. And I can also promise that you are not safe here. Then I insist Fritz comes with us. I know he has the curse, which means he should be welcome there. No, until I can prove that he can be trusted, he is not welcome. He might be he might be the same as Alcaster. That moment Dolores mentions Sir Alcaster, she suddenly stops speaking. She shakes her head and turns away. What does Sir Alcaster have to do with any of this? Nothing you should be concerned yourself with. You still are the most suspicious one here, witch. That's it. I run out of patience. I'm done waiting around, princess. We're going back to the Martian right now. And how do you suppose we'll sneak past Fritz? Dolores smiles at me. The mischief in her smell is too familiar. Oh no. I am a witch, princess. What is she doing? Did we just- Did we just jump out the window? Like, what happened? <laughs> I walked alongside Dolores as we make our way back to the Martian. Dolores is now in her human form, humming cheerfully. Not what you were expecting. No. Sometimes symbol is better. Why use a spell when a potion will do the trick? That's why she had me distract Fritz at dinner. What's the sleeping potion in his cup? Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, perceptive. Yes, nothing can wake him from slumber. But will he wake up? Please, I'm a good witch, remember? I don't do the killing thing. Now, pick up the face, princess. We have a meeting to get to. We make it back to the Martian without an incident. Jaren and Garland are waiting for us inside. As soon as they see us, they dart towards the door. You made it! We were worried that we might need to get to break in to get both of you out. Don't sound so surprised. I told you I could handle this. Then why did it take you so long to return here? Because someone was being stubborn and refused to leave without her knight. You weren't followed? Of course not. I'm very glad you're all right, princess. Fritz is my personal knight. The time I spent with him was the safest I felt since I was cursed. It felt more normal. I know he's dependable and will do whatever I ask of him. It is his job to protect me after all. Wait, so how long was Fritz cursed for? That's what I'm wondering because he was her personal life for, for a couple of years, right? So, what? How long was he cursed for? What the fuck? Okay, I don't know. I barely know these people. I would rather be with Fritz, but something about Sir Alcaster puts me on edge. As you can see, the princess is perfectly fine. She hasn't thought at all. Jorin ignores Dolores and fixes her gaze on me. We were worried when you suddenly disappeared, princess. I stared at her, confused. What was there to be worried about? I was with Fritz. I know the circumstances may not have been the best, but Fritz protected me. And I had plans to return to the Martian at some point. Why does anyone here care what happens to me anyway? Where's Parfait? Well, she isn't here. She's barely been back since you left. What? Ever since we got the message that she found the princess, Lady Parfait had been absent from the Martian. She returns, but only briefly. Does she say where she goes? No. She won't answer even if someone asks. Just smiles that fairy smile of hers and says nothing at all. Drives me crazy when she does that. What is going on? So the fairy we need to see isn't here. I had a thought that I want to return here, but now everyone knows that I'm safe. It's fine for me to return to Fritz, isn't it? 
I feel uneasy being around so many people that are openly keeping secrets from me. There's no reason for me to be here. I cannot- I can't return to Fritz. No. You are in no position to order me around. I will go back and no one will stop me. I begin walking towards the door when I hear Dolores sigh heavily behind me. Alright, alright, keep your dress on. I was not planning to removing it. It's a figure of- Oh, never mind. Look, just give me a few seconds, okay? I need to get some things and we'll, be, we'll go back. We? Don't even think that I'll let you go back alone, princess. Is she just gonna go outside like that? I can figure Lucy was just like, okay, I'm going now. <laughs> I'm left alone with Jared and Garland. Are you really staying at Alcaster's home? I almost forgotten that Jared and Garland had served under Sir Alcaster's command when they were still in the Order of Caldria. Yes. The two former knights are uncharacteristically quiet, their expression dark. Is something wrong? Are you sure you're safe there, princess? Of course. Fritz has been my personal knight for the last three years. I know that he will protect me no matter what. Just be careful around Alcaster. Did something happen between you and Sir Alcaster? I'd still be a part of the Order of Caldria if it wasn't for him. It was said that Jurin and Garland had been discharged for disobeying Sir, Cal Sir Alcaster's orders, but is that the whole truth? He's a two-faced traitor. If I ever saw him again- Jurin, what happened? It's nothing to worry about, princess. Delora just told me the same thing. What exactly are they hiding about Sir Alcaster? She should be worried about it, damn it! Of all people in Andia Angiel, she should know what he is planning! Someone coughs, and we turn to see Dolores standing there, looking at us expectantly. What did I miss? Jorin was telling me about why she left the Order of Caldra. Was she? I had never seen Dolores glare at anyone the way she was glaring at Jorin. Eventually, the former knight turns away. Let's go, Garland. Stay safe, princess. You too, Lady Dolora. Huh. This is very interesting, because in the other routes... I mean, like, we didn't find out until later on, but they were so ready to, like, say it now. I think it's just because it's too early for them to mention what Alcaster and fucking Snake on the other side is doing. You... Didn't you want to return to the knight's house? Why are you stalling now? You know something about Sir Alcaster being the reason for the knight's discharge, don't you? Yes. Well then, why are you insisting on keeping it a secret? You lived in the palace before and heard rumors. You were con you were content with them. Why are you suddenly taking so much inter interest in the, all of this now? Because you and the knights are clearly hiding something about him. Curiosity can kill the cat, little princess. Besides, none of this is important right now. You have other things to focus on, like breaking your curse. What have you done these past few days, hmm? Nothing. That's what. Damn, Dolora, please. <laughs> it's like you want to remain the Little Miss Peasant forever. Ooh, shit! <laughs> the only reason I am in this position is because of you, and you have done nothing to help me. Excuse me? All I've ever gone for you are insults and snide remarks. I have been trying my best, but all you of all people should know how difficult it is for me. I stop talking at once. The anger and frustration inside me makes it difficult to form words. Delora has been with me for almost a year now. She she should know how difficult it is for me to be good. But she I never understood. She still cursed me. It is as if she is mocking me. I turn away from Delora and head towards the door. Princess, wait. That's right, because Delora is her favorite doll, doll at the time, so... Oh. I have better things to do than get insulted by a witch. I have done nothing, but think about how I to break the curse she put me on me. How dare she... Oh, Waltz! Princess! Keep walking, stop. Ah. Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, this is the thing. Like, I would want her to stop because it's Waltz and, like, all of them are trying to, like, help her. But I think she she has to go to Fritz, right? Is that a thing? Like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't have time for this. I ignore Waltz and continue walking. Waltz reaches out and takes a hold of my arm, forcing me to stop. What are you doing? I'm leaving. Leaving? Do you know how worried everyone's been? How I- how worried I was? As you can see, I'm fine. I'll be even better when I'm away from the Martian, so I'm leaving. Three days. What? I haven't seen you in three days, and you're just gonna brush me off? I've been spending my free time looking for you after we got separated that day. Oh, Waltz! Did you know how bad I felt when I lost you? If something had happened to you, I would never forgive myself. Dolores sent, he sent you her message. Yes, but even then, all we knew is that she was with you. That didn't mean you were safe. I yanked my arm out of his grasp. 
I would have been perfectly safe even if Dolora wasn't with me. In fact, I would still have my old life if she hadn't never cursed me. Princess? You found her! Carmen is suddenly standing before me, smiling with relief. We were worried about you, darling. It's so good to see our princess has returned. We have so much to catch up on. You should come inside! I'm not going back in there. Why not? There's no point. I have been perfectly safe in a different place. I think Dolores has something to do with this situation. What did she say to you, princess? Nothing she didn't need to hear. Insufferable witch. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sounds like a cat fight to me. Karma, you might want to keep your notes out of other people's business. I'm not staying here any longer. You cannot stop me from leaving. I turn on my heels and begin to walk off. Princess! Let her go. But... What? But outside she'll be... She needs more space to think. Don't go too far, princess. Are you daft? I said I'm not coming back. You will, if you value your life, princess. I cannot quell the irritation stirring in the pit of my stomach. I turn on my heels and walk off. So peaceful here at night. The sound of approaching footsteps made me stop. Standing out here alone in the dark plaza does not bode well. I quickly slide into the alleyway and stand with my back against the wall, hoping the shadow will keep me from sight. Oh god. Why are you following me? The voice from the other night. You noticed. Sir Alcaster? Don't think I'm a useless idiot like the boy. Of course I noticed. I would take care in remembering that me and the boy are nothing alike. Don't think you can fool me, Varg. Varg. I have to know. I move slightly, sticking my head out of the angle so I can see the man standing before Alcaster. So wait, does Alcaster know that, that Varg is Fritz? Is that what's going on? Like, okay, I don't know. The plaza's empty except for the two people. Sir Alcaster's looking at the man that wears the elaborate mask. I notice that he also carries an odd-looking cane. That must be Varg. But who is he and how does Sir Alcaster know him? I've never seen anyone like him in this palace before. I've never seen anything like him in the palace before. What would I want to fool you for? Then explain why you're out here and you haven't been ordered to come to the palace. Tell me. You wanted the princess to- You wanted the princess cap safe, didn't you? Don't be flippant, you know we serve Mythos in this. What does Sir Mythos want? Is the princess not at the house? <laughs> would I be out here if she was? Whoa, what was that? Do not be smart with me. Sir Alcaster just punched him like it was nothing. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> How is he still standing? The blow should have knocked him to the ground. Answer me clearly. Has she left the house? Sir Alcaster's voice is eerily calm and level, despite the fact that his body is still tense. Yes. You will find her before dawn. I will not repeat myself. Answer me. Yes, I will find her. Good. I watch as Sir Alcaster walks away, leaving Varg to stand alone in the dark plaza. I can barely breathe as I stand watching him, waiting for some kind of movement. It looks like Sir Alcaster has ordered him to keep me safe, but I do not know if this arrangement will and will not trust him. Oh. The sound of shattered glass echoes through the plaza. Varg immediately rushes off to investigate, moving away from my hiding spot. I feel myself instantly follow after him, despite my mind's illogical protests. Girl, she just wants to be in trouble, isn't she? Shh. Dolores places her hand over my mouth and unmuffles my voice. We both watch Varg until he disappears and there's nothing but silence for the company. Then, and only then, does Dolores move her hand away from my mouth. That man. Did you catch his name? What? His name. Sir Alcaster called him Varg. Varg. Who is he? Judging by the mask and cane, he has probably works for the witches. That's a parfait and I think. Looks like he's working for Sir Alcaster too. We look up and notice Carmen and Waltz running towards us. Ah, oh, here comes the cavalry. <laughs> Late as expected. Waltz looks winded, but he does not stop him from glaring at me. Don't. Ever. Do that again. And what is happening here? Hmm? You two look awfully suspicious hiding out in the alleyway. None of your business. I was surprised when Dolores takes my arm and pulls me away from Waltz and Karma. Where are you going? Mysteries are afoot, kid, and we're not going to solve any of them by waiting around in the marsh for Parfait to return for her, from her business. What are you ta- where are you taking the princess and why? Hmm, that's a good question. Dolora, we all decided that the Martian is the safest place that the princess can be. 
technically the princess's save is wherever either Parfait and I can keep an eye on her, and now we have an excuse for the princess to be somewhere else. She speaks as if I am a child to be babysat. I've got some questions that need answering and I'm going to need the princess to get them solved. Besides, she's directly involved in some mess and she wants answers too. Something seems off about this whole thing. Sorry to say, but your opinions on this matter are irrelevant. Let's go, Lucette. To Laura? The solemn expression on Waltz's face is foreign to me. There is darkness in his eyes, a warning. I trust you. As you should. Delora nods, then she ta turns back to me. We'll be in touch. Let me know when Parfait gets back. Huh. This is gonna be interesting. So this is like, uh, Mission Impossible style with Delora on our side. I don't know. <laughs> our trip back to the Leverton home is silent. Delora has reverted to her doll form. I hold her close to my chest. Both of us are quiet. I'm not lost in my own thoughts. I wonder what questions Delora has that I could possibly help her with. Delora. Princess. We speak at the same time. All right, you first. Or not. I'll go first then. I want to apologize. Don't look so surprised. I can admit it when I'm wrong. That's a lesson you need to learn too. But that's for another day. I know you've been working to break your curse and I know you've been putting a lot of effort into it. And I know why it's been- why it would be difficult for you to accomplish three good deeds. I want you to know that I want- I do want you to succeed, princess. Most of the time it doesn't feel that way. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have cursed you if I didn't think you were capable of overcoming it, Lucette. I truly believe you will break your curse. Well, that's nice of her. <laughs> we turn onto the path and lead to the Leverting home. I pause and squint oddly at the shaped shadows by the doorway. I quickly slip off to the road and behind the nearest obstacle. It's dark, but is that- Delora has not seen what I have. She keeps talking. More to the point, you must break your curse. It's vital that you do as, as soon as possible. There's a very good reason why I- I slap my hand over her mouth and muffle her. I only just manage to hide her when the shadow moves. The moonlight glints off his mask just for an instant, but it is enough. Oh shit, it's Varg. He starts to turn in my direction. Oh no, what do we do? Uh, okay, if I learned anything, when I played um, G Game of Thrones Telltale's version, when we were hiding and that dude was coming towards us, the best option there was to stay still. If you move, then they'll definitely know something is there. So let's try staying still. I freeze in place. Hmm. There's no one here. Look away. Look away! Dolores struggling in my arm. I do my best to still her with my hands. If she gets us caught, and then, as if by magic, the, the clouds move, scaring the light from the moon. An inky, black, almost unnatural shadow falls over me. After a heartbeat, he turns away from me. I watch as he slips around the side of the Leverington home and disappears from sight. I run back to the plaza, but Waltz and Karma are no longer there. What do I do now? Not even a thank you? Delora pops her head out of my pocket, shaking her hair. I just moved some clouds and played with the shadows to keep us hidden from a crazy masked man, but you know, I do that all the time. That was you? Well, it wasn't the wind. I had no idea she had such power. I... Well, hello there. I whirl right around, once again keeping my hands over Delora to hide her from sight. If it isn't the crown princess herself, surely good princesses shouldn't be out on their own at this time of night. But then, you're not at all good, are you? Good girls do what they are to told and stay in one place. But you're not one for letting people keep you rooted in place, are you? Do you have any idea how long I've been looking for you? Heh, <laughs> where's my manners? I haven't introduced myself. He sweeps into a deep, elegant bow. I'm Varg, Sir Alcaster's humble servant. He told me about your issues. He asked me to keep an eye on you, make sure you're safe. I already have a personal night. Oh, could have fooled me. Haven't seen him around, have you? Fritz. Looks like he's slacking off to me. Fritz is not slacking off. He's just under the influence of an extremely potent sleeping potion and is unable to wake up. All that we, all so that we could sneak out. This is all my fault. A crown princess shouldn't have made, make excuses for her knight, don't you think? Sounds like he's pretty incapable. Varg approaches, then holds his arm out. I'll escort you back. I stare at his arm, but do not take it. Varg tilts his head to the side. I cannot read his expression through his mask. Don't you trust me, princess? No. What were you expecting? Was it expecting you to be honest? I thought princesses were meant to be shy and sweet all the time. You know, like Emmeline. I am not Emmeline. 
So I'm learning. Varg reaches out and grabs my hand. He places it in the crook of his arm with a smug smile. Let's go. I can do nothing but follow you as he forces me along. Do not appreciate being dragged. And I don't like waiting around for someone that's not going to ha for something that's not gonna happen. This is for your own safety, princess. He flashes an almost predatory smile at me, his teeth suddenly bright in the darkness. He says he is meant to keep me safe, but I feel like he's going to devour me. Huh. Interesting quote there. Is that is that a hint of what his curse is? Because is there any fun comments? People, people keep thinking like it's maybe like little red riding hood or something. That, that, that'd be really interesting. I am still shaking when I return to my room in the Leverton home. I've already heard Varg leave the, the house, but I'm not convinced that the lock on the front door will keep him out. Well, that was exciting. Are you alright? Cannot show weakness. Not now, not ever. I'm fine. I never knew there was a back door to this place. Pretty convenient for sneaking past your guard dog, isn't it? Wonder how Varg knew that door existed. Hey, chin up. You did well back there. I froze. I did nothing. I was useless. There's nothing you could have done. He already seems to be an accomplished tracker. But if I... But nothing. If anything, this is my fault for not being able to protect you. I do not know why I am so afraid of Varg. He works for Sir Alcaster. He wouldn't hurt me. She has the look again. Is it because of her suspicion of Alcaster, or is it because she suspects that Varg is serving the witches? Alcaster mentions her mythos before that, but I have no idea how he plays into any of this. No point in worrying about it now. We're not going to get any answers just by staring at the wall. Might, w might as well just get some sleep. Why aren't you- what are you telling me, Delora? An awful lot, Lucette. And I'm not going to tell you anything until tomorrow morning, so go to bed. Do not think I'll be able to sleep tonight unless- Delora? Yes. It is strange because I thought I'd grown outgrown this tendency, but I used to do this all the time. Can I hold you until I fall asleep? I think I see a glimmer of smile in, in Dolores' face. Of course. Aww, Dolores, sweet. That's nice. You know, I mean, even though they're not arguing all the time, like, she still wants to help. I grab Dolores and hold her against my chest. Her weight and shape are familiar and comforting. When I was in the palace, hugging my dolls made me feel like I wasn't alone. Sweet dreams, Lucette. My queen. That voice, it's familiar. Fate in the traitor's approach. The tenebrium grows weak. Mother? You will prevail. You are, str you are far stronger, far more beautiful. Enough. My beauty is irrelevant. The tide of war is coming. We must consider our options. But your majesty, if I must wait for my revenge, then I will. What will you do? As my queen commands. My faithful student, you'll be rewarded for your loyalty, and the traitor will be de uh, demanded for his betrayal. Believe in me, believe in us, we will be victorious. The humans and the traitors will pay. That's mythos, right? Yeah, I, I bet that is. I sit up in my bed, my heart pounding. I can't remember. The details of the dream are already fading from my mind, but the, the dread it still hangs in my chest like dark, heavy cloud. It must have been a nightmare. Princess? I turned to see Fritz standing in the doorway, his eyes filled with concern. I didn't mean to. I heard you and I... Are you okay? Fritz. You ate the stress of what happened with Varg. Maybe it's the nightmare that w I just woke up from. Or maybe it is the relief of seeing a familiar face. But suddenly, there are tears in my eyes. Princess? Fritz? Aww. <laughs> then suddenly, Fritz's arms are around me and I'm pressed close to his warm chest. I can hear his heartbeat. Do you want to talk about it? Oh god, oh no, like, oh no, because I know they're friends, they've been friends for three years, it's like, you should talk to your friend about, like, problems, but this dude is, like, with a weird curse, oh no. I guess we'll tell him, like, I don't, this is the thing, like, when he turns into Varg, does he remember everything he has done as Fritz? I assume he does, but, ah, oh, fuck, let's just tell him. I cannot remember it clearly, but I believe it was a nightmare. I can remember Mother's voice, the cruel, wicked contempt of her voice. It was terrible. And suddenly coldness slides over my body, making me shiver despite Fritz's best ever. Still, he doesn't slip away. Okay, thank God. <laughs> His closeness once again comforts me after some time. He's so warm. You know, Princess, I'm glad I could comfort you at this time, even if I wasn't ever able to before. How did you know I had night nightmares? It was my on my night patrol. Sometimes I would pass by your door and hear you. 
You never said anything. Fritz runs his hand through my hair. His touch is gentle and comforting. It was never my business, personal night or not. I figured if you ever needed to tell anyone, I'd be there for you. Aww. I only knew I only know time is passing because of the shifting shadows in my room. And too soon the room brightens with the dawn of a new day. I feel safe. I had forgotten Delora was with you, but now she squirms steadily in my grasp. A small flutter of motion does not even catch Fritz's eye. Hmm? When Fritz moves away, I quickly hide Delora behind me. Why are you smiling at me like that? It's just nice to know that some things don't change. What? Oh, princess, you didn't have any tea I served yesterday, did you? The tea. That's when they slipped the potion to. Now that he's brought it up, I have no idea what to say. I managed to weak shrug of my shoulder and shake my head, telling him that I did not. You should really try it sometime. I haven't slept so well in a long time. I feel remarkably refreshed. I feel Dolores shaking behind me and I can tell that she's trying not to laugh. I pinch her arm. <laughs> sure. He lets go of me and stands up. Speaking of tea, it's actually time for breakfast. We'll pass on to the we'll pass on the tea today. Did I ever tell you about the best bakery in NGL? No, I think you told me about the best baker? Oh, but princess, there are two different things. There are all kinds of shops in the town plaza. Two different things. Like the baker makes the croissants, the best bakery, well I'll show you. But first, I'll let you get changed. Hey princess. Fritz might be fine, but his father's clearly not. Be careful today. Are you not coming with us? I'm going to stay here and see what I can dig up when no one else is looking. Lucette? I have never heard her say my name so seriously before. I mean it. Be careful and stay safe. If Varg shows up when we're not here, you too, Dolora. Be careful. Much to my surprise, she sinks into a plate curtsy. As the princess commands. <laughs> Chapter 5! Revelations? Uh-oh, that's not good. Anyway, I'm gonna end the episode here. I hope you all enjoyed Cinderella Phenomena so far. So, again, we really didn't really get into Fritz's car, so hopefully in the next episode we will. But, I, I get the feeling that maybe, maybe Alcaster turned, uh, gave the curse to Fritz. I'm not saying he's a witch. Maybe he asked Mithros to, like, hey, curse my son because he's not following my orders. If you curse him to the point where I can control him, then it will work out. I think that's what's going on here because he does work for Mythos, you know what I mean? So I think he's the one who cursed him. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Cinderella Phenomenon, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you'd like to help support the channel on Patreon, there's a link in the description. You get early access to videos, videos for Patreon only, the Discord server to come talk to me, and a bunch of other stuff as well that I mail it to you every month. Or you can check out the links in the description, like my store or the Humble Bundle links that will help out the channel as well. I'd really appreciate that. Alright, so let me know in the comments what you think is going on with Fritz's curse. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye! The Raven. The biggest symbol in life is strange to before the storm. Everywhere Chloe went, there it was, watching over her. But what exactly does this mean? Okay! Alright! Oh, that's a CG. I know I have to still blur it, but that's a CG. Okay. Her, her arms wrap around.